Hello and welcome to Faith Up Today. I'm sure that the blessedness of God is upon your life and you are living in the fullness even of God's plan and promises for your life. I want you to know that God's plan will always come to pass. All we need to do is to seek to be in alignment with the divine promise and the divine will. If you can live in alignment, I can assure you that your life will pan out exactly how the Lord plans it to be. Right? What a beautiful place to be. This is the right place to be. Just look at the word of God together in this month. Listen, this month is the month of the spirit life. And all through this month, I like to engage you on certain spiritual truth as it concerns the person of the Holy Spirit. All through the month is the month of the spirit life. I don't want you to miss any of this series. It will bless you. It will transform you. It will make you walk in accordance with God's plan and promises for your life. You know, the best gifts are given by God. And one of the greatest gifts man has been given and man will ever be given is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but many times we cannot walk in the fullness of God's plan because we do not understand how the Holy Spirit operates, how the Holy Spirit uh, can make our life better. So in, to this month, I want to be sharing on the operations, the activities of the Holy Spirit, uh, even as it concerns the believer. It's going to bless you. These are not sermons you listen to once or you listen to again and again. I'd like to start our discuss together this day. Um, by looking at a portion of scripture together. Before that, I'd like you to tell your friends, tell your colleagues, if you're listening to this sermon, share this sermon with somebody. Let them know this service will bless their life. I'll share this sermon with somebody because I've got a word from God that will transform you. This is what I call a life message. I want to teach you from the vastness uh, of the wisdom in scriptures from my experience uh, and for what I've seen and handled uh, even of the word of life. Two openings very quickly, and the two openings are from the book of Acts. Let's read Acts chapter 8, 18, and then verse 5. Acts 18, verse 5, scripture says, When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. Look at that word, compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus uh, is the Christ. Acts 20, and then we read verses 17 to 24. Acts 20, 17 to 24. Look at these. From Miletus is sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. This was Paul. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you. Serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you. I taught you publicly from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. Look at that. He said, now I go bound. I go bound bound in the spirit bound in the spirit he said i go bound in the spirit to jerusalem not knowing the things that will happen to me there that word spirit there is the word s small letter he said in my spirit man i am bound to go i am compelled to go because see that word compel and the word bound is from the same greek word which is the word deus he said i am bound and compelled by the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations are with me. He said, I do not have a word as it concerns where I'm going. He said, but the Spirit says I should go. I do not know what will happen there. He said, but there is a generic word over my life, and this is the testimony of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I was that testimony. He said that chains and tribulations are with me in every city. He said, but none of these things move me, verse 24, nor do I count my life there to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of Christ. Very few minutes, uh, even this evening, I'd like to share with you, compelled by the Spirit, compelled by the Spirit. Shall we pray, Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the world will give light, give understanding to us simple folks. But I've come to 
we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of the writer, and I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let us grow in knowledge. Let us grow in understanding. Let the reason for sending your word be fulfilled. Let's walk according to the wisdom that comes from you and not the wisdom of man. But I'll speak as, oracle, as your oracle today. I will not speak vain wisdom, but I'll speak wisdom that is from above, wisdom that is heavenly, wisdom that can distill and help men even to walk in the reality of your plan. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, and amen. The word is compelled by the Spirit. I do not think uh, many believers have, uh, are new to that word, led by the Spirit. I believe that many believers understand what it means, uh, uh, and they know that the Holy Spirit leads people. Uh, scripture says, as many as are sons of God, they are, as many as are children of God, they are led even by the Spirit of God. The Spirit leads us, uh, and such a beautiful thing for the Spirit to lead you, all right? I, I believe that you are not really a believer if you cannot be led by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the leading spirit concerning the believer. We do not navigate our life by our senses. We navigate by the leading of the Spirit. And you see, one of the most compelling ways and one of the most interesting ways by which the Spirit leads uh, is that the Spirit leads us by compelling us, all right? Many people who have learned about dreams, about visions, about um, God's speakings uh, and all of that, uh, but, but they have not learned and we have not really taught our people how that the Holy Spirit compels. And you see, the compelling of the Spirit uh, is also a way by which the Holy Spirit leads. And, and when we read Acts chapter 20, uh, I believe um, it's one of those concluding sermons that Paul wrote, uh, taught uh, uh, in his third missionary journey. He was about to go to Jerusalem and he preached this what I consider one of his greatest sermons, at least uh, that is very instructional. Uh, and that is an act felt farewell to the church even at Ephesus. All right, this is not a writing. Many things we find about Paul were, were his epistles, but, but uh, I mean, his letters. This was his message. This was him speaking. And Paul tell, told these Ephesians, elder, the elders at Ephesus, uh, the reason for his departure. I mean, it didn't make sense that he was leaving. Uh, they didn't understand why he was leaving, uh, despite all the warnings. Uh, and he said he's compelled by the Spirit. And uh, uh, the KJV says he's bound by the Spirit. Many of us have experienced this kind of leading. Uh, many of us are new to this kind of leading. Uh, although it's a, it's a leading that's difficult to explain to people around you, but it is a germane and a genuine way by which God leads his people. What being compelled means uh, being driven beyond your ability to resist uh, the leading prompted uh, by the Holy Ghost. Uh, it means you are driven beyond an ability to resist. Uh, despite your best effort to resist, uh, the Holy Spirit keeps leading you in a certain direction. I agree with the word uh, of Mark Adgrove as it concerns this. He said, if we can bring ourselves to that place of ultimate surrender, then we will be compelled and propelled by the Spirit into our destiny and into God's divine will for our lives. You see, when it concerns the journey to purpose and the journey to destiny, one of the instrumental voices uh, that the Lord will lead you by, or maybe I shouldn't say voice, I say channel. One of the pivotal channel through which God will lead you is that Jehovah will lead you via his compelling spirit. The scripture speaks as it concerns Paul being compelled by the spirit. Do you know what it means to be compelled by the spirit? Have you ever been compelled by the spirit? And what should you do with the Holy Spirit compelling you? I mean, the King James Version call it bound. I mean, and you have heard of people being bound to addiction, bound to drugs, bound to sex, uh, bound to other vices. Uh, and so you have this idea that to be bound, uh, to use the word bound or to use the word compel as it, as it concerns force uh, and the Holy Spirit should not be used in the same sentence. Uh, why? Because you found that the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. The Holy Spirit, uh, according to the testimonies of scriptures, uh, uh, is a spirit of freedom. Uh, there is deliverance from bondage where the spirit of the Lord is. He set people free. So why should I use the word bound? Why should I use the word compel and the Holy Spirit together? To be sure, let's look at the word compel. The word compel um, is the, it means to force or to oblige someone to do something, right? Um, when I compel you to come to my house... Uh, I am obliging you to come to my house. I am, I am, I'm telling you, you've got to come to my house. It might not be in your plan. It might not be something you want to do, 
but when you oblige or compel someone, you are actually taking away their choice. All right. So it's, it's that word can be used force can be used because it is not, it's no longer subjected to the desire. It's no longer subjected to the will of the person, but there is a will higher than the will of this person operational as it concerns compelling. So when the Bible speaks of the Spirit compelling us, uh, it is saying that there is the will of God that overrides uh, the desire, that overrides uh, the will uh, even of the believer. It means to, to force to come or to go in a particular direction. All right, the, the compelling power compels you to go in a particular direction. It means to bring about pressure, livorosi anama, to, to put pressure on someone to do what is the divine will. God has proposed to do a thing. Scripture says the hand of the Lord is stretched forth. Who can turn it back? Scripture says that God has proposed a thing. Who can annul it? All right, when the Lord has decided this is something to be done and he has found an aged fit on the heart, the compelling spirit comes upon the person to ensure that that person goes in the direction that the Spirit will want that person to go. Uh, what does that word compel? He also have the, the underlining of to bring under pressure. It means to bring under pressure. And many times we have been led in this direction and our friends will think we have been foolish. Our friends will think we have been mad. Because as it concerns the compelling spirit, you do not have a word, not an exact word to say, God say I should go and he told me this. You just know like you know that you know that you know that it has been put upon you. Almost a spiritual dress that you have to do what God has said. And that's why it didn't make sense to people that Paul was on that journey. The word compel means to be constrained as through a channel. To be constrained as through a channel. The Holy Spirit compels and constrains us. The channel through which God ensures that purpose is battered on the heart is through the channel of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has the ability. I know you that you are taught that is such a gentle spirit. I know you are taught uh, that the Holy Spirit uh, uh, moves and we shouldn't grieve him uh, and all of that. Be gentle, be quiet in the presence of the Spirit. But don't forget the Spirit is an expression of God himself. One of the things the Spirit has the ability to do is that it can put you under a compelling power. It can put you, it can oblige you. It can pressurize or force you to do something, to bat something or to go in a particular direction. The Holy Spirit can bat that inside of you. And I remember I was under this compelling impression of the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's sometimes in July 2009. Uh, and on the 30th, on the 30th uh, July 2009, that day, faithful day, what I call the final call, the Holy Spirit began to tell me what I had to do. But before that time, there was a compelling power. There was a compelling force. I knew that the hand of the Lord has come upon me. I knew that the Lord was calling me to something deeper. I know the Lord was asking me to separate myself onto the assignment he has given unto me. And I took time out, began to pray. The more I prayed, the more I waited on the Lord, the more I felt uh, that compelling uh, pressure of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and that did not mean that anything happened uh, until the day 30th when the Lord then began to speak. But before the voice of the Lord, uh, I already had, I was under that compelling pressure. And despite the fact that I found it difficult, like many people, to yield to what we call full-time ministry, the compelling pressure, power of the Spirit, was continual upon my life uh, for many months until I yielded on the first day of December 2009. Uh, listen, there's something called the compelling power of the Spirit. It will take away the, the leisure of life. It will take away pleasure from you. It will take away desires from you. It will take away po other pursuits from you. Why? Because there is a path that has been caught, uh, predestinated for you. And that is the path the Spirit will ensure that you walk in. Uh, it's called the compelling power of the Spirit. Can I ask you, have you ever been under that compelling power of the Holy Ghost? It comes with a sense of urgency. The compelling power of the Spirit. It comes with a sense of purpose. It comes with a sense of priority. You know that you, that you know your name. Of utmost priority, this is the path I must follow. You know, you may not be able to explain to people. The Spirit leads us 
by compelling us. Mm -hmm. Many times you want to travel, you, you, you just know, I don't know, but I have to leave my house right now. You don't know, you just know you have to make that move right now. There is no explanation, no voice, no word. But this is what you've got to do. It's a compelling force of the Spirit. You see, one of the things you must learn in the school of the Spirit is to answer to the yieldings of the Spirit even when there are no words to back it up. Listen, vocals and words are essential communication in the realm we are right now. But in the realm of the Spirit, it is everything is not by sound. It's not by words. At certain times, the pressure of the Spirit, the presence of the Spirit can cause certain movement. Even in the realm, even the realm of the Spirit. You are saying, you know, I know in my heart. God is calling me. I know in my heart, this is where I should be. I know in my heart, this is the place for me. And somebody say, explain it. You can't. Don't worry that you can't. There is something they call the compelling power even of the spirit. You know, many times we are stagnated because we do not yield to the spirit's compelling power. You know, most times we want to have all the details. We want to have all the answers. But God doesn't work that way. Paul said in Acts 20, 22 to 24, he said, I go to Jerusalem not knowing what to expect. Wow. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we are taught that we need to know before we go. Listen, Paul Paul the Apostle, Paul the Great Woman, Paul who wrote the epistles, uh, Paul who explained salvation to us, uh, Paul who taught us the revelations of the Christ, uh, said, I am now going to Jerusalem. Uh, this was not after he became born again. This was after, this was during his third missionary journey. And he said, I'm going not knowing what to expect. Can I say to somebody, it's okay to go not knowing what to expect? I just feel like telling someone that again. That it's okay to go, not knowing what to expect. God told me this yesterday, and it's so great. Uh, it's so great. You may want to write this down. He said, the greatest field of faith is reserved for those with unquestioned and unhindered trust in God. The greatest field of faith is reserved for those with unquestioned and unhindered trust in God. If you are going to walk in compelling spirit, I won't, I won't tell you four things you've got to do. Four things you will have to do. You are going to walk in more of the compelling power of the Spirit. Number one, live a life of complete surrender to God's will. It's not, so, it's not a song. Surrender is not a song. Surrender is a life we live. You've got to surrender your life to live by the Spirit. You've got to subject your plans, your desires to the one who is higher than you, God himself. No one can plan your life better than Jesus. No one can do you better than Jesus. There's a song like that. No, he knows the way. My Lord knows the way to the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow. My God knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow. Many times we find it difficult to do the least thing God wants us to do, which is to just follow. He knows the way. He knows the way. And we must do is to follow. We must learn to follow. I've come, as is written of me in the volume of the book, uh, to do your will, O oh God. 47 Psalms, uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and then verse 7. Um, and I love, I love what our Paul put it in Ephesians uh, chapter 5 verse 17 in the letter I wrote to the Christians at Ephesus. He said, do not be unwise. Understand uh, what the will of God is. It, it's not just knowing the will of God. You've got to understand it. But, but much more than that, is that you've got to follow the will of God. Listen, the greatest longing of the believer must be doing the will of God. Doing the will of God. Only in the will of God will you find your utmost satisfaction. And that's number one. Live a life of complete surrender. Number two, a life of obedience and trust in God. I may sense his compelling power, but if I don't trust him, I will not follow him. And that links me back to what the Lord said to me. He said that the greatest feat of faith is reserved for those with unquestioned and unhindered trust in God, right? So you've got to have trust in God. To trust God is the Greek word pistios, which means faithfulness. Faithfulness is to count God faithful, is to know that God can be counted upon. Even if you don't have the answers, Paul said, you know what, I'm going to Jerusalem. I do not know what to expect, but I know that I can trust him. Listen, even when you don't know what to expect, you can trust that you are in God's hands. 
You won't go farther than your trust. Little wonder, Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, Scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Say, lean not in your own understanding, nor your ways, acknowledge him. Scripture says, and he will straighten your path. It means that there are certain times that our path is crooked. At certain times, our path is rugged. But Bible says there is a promise. He said, it will straighten your path. 828 of Romans, uh, Scripture says, for we know that all things, not some things, work together for them who love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Job was, had lost everything. Life had happened to him. Life had thrown him a cough. But I love what Job said in the midst of that conversation with his friends, in the midst of that second round even of conversation with his friends. Job 19.25, he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. So I know, and he will stand again on the heart. Listen, dear friends, your Redeemer lives. It means to trust God. So you've got to know that you will not go farther than your trust in God. You won't go farther than your trust in God. Disobedience is not an option for that, for that person who is constrained to follow. There have been times in my life where my friend did not understand what it means to follow the Christ. There have been times that I've been misunderstood. There have been times uh, when, I, when I have had to give up things that I like just to follow the Christ. But Paul considered his life nothing. Nothing. If only he could finish the task that the Lord has given him to complete. He counted the things of his life dung just to follow the Christ. And then number three, you've got to love the Christ and his kingdom. Paul says, the love of Christ constrains us. That's 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14. The love of Christ constrains us. We are, we are compelled by the love of Christ. How, how, how is it that when I have that compelling power of the Spirit upon me, how is it that I will yield? I will yield because I can trust the Lord, right? But I would also yield because I love the Christ. I love him. The love of Christ constrains us. We are compelled by the love of Christ. It, is, it means our workings and our exploit in the Spirit is constrained to how much we love Christ. Your exploit in the Spirit is constrained to how much you love Christ. You won't do more and you won't go further and further in the realm of the Spirit than your love work. No, no, not your love work, than the manner you love the Christ. I can tell how you love God by your dominion, by your heart's condition. I will, I will, I would rather, I would rather be out. I would rather uh, be, be, be trodden, be trodden upon. I would rather let my right be bastardized if Jesus will be glorified. If Jesus will be glorified. He, he, I would rather be used for Jesus to be glorified. And I love how that Gilbert Mills put it. He said, if you are not used, then you are useless. He said, to be useful means to be used. Somebody has to use you. <laughs> Is it that God use you or men use you? And I found out that in the kingdom of God, men will have to use you on behalf of the Christ. Listen, and I'll say this all heartedly, that it takes the love of Christ uh, to actually live a life being compelled of the Spirit. If a man doesn't love God, it will be impossible for him to prioritize that which is of Christ. That which is of Christ. And number four, live in step with the Spirit. Can a man can't have their hearts steered by the Holy Ghost? They can't. They can't have their hearts steered by the Holy Spirit. To have a heart steered is to have a heart set on fire. To have a heart set on course by the Holy Ghost. To have a heart revived by the Holy Ghost. I hope you are in alignment to God. I hope nothing matters but God himself. I love what God, how God said it to me. He said, what fills a heart, steers a heart. What fills a heart, steers a heart. A heart filled with the spiritual will be steered with the spiritual. A heart filled with carnality will be steered by carnality. A heart filled with sex will be steered by sex. A heart filled with God, consumed with God, will be steered by God. Check what you feel into your heart. Because garbage in garbage out. If I can keep feeding my heart with that which is of God, I will be steered by that which is of God. If I keep steering, putting in my heart that which is of football, that which is of fun, that which is of entertainment, the only thing that will arouse me will be entertainment. It's time to be steered of God. It's time to be steered of God. If I'm going to live in compelling power of the Spirit, I'm going to live in it. I'm going to live in it. Then we have to be steered by the Spirit. We've got to be steered by the Spirit. You see what I said? I said four things now. 
Four things now. If you're going to be compelled, number one, you've got to live a life of complete surrender to God's will. Can I ask you, are you surrendered to the will of God? In your health, in your relationship, in your ministry, in your finances, in your, in your vocation, are you surrendered to the will of God? Can I also ask you, are you living a life of obedience and trust in God? And that's very key. And number three, live the, love the Christ and his kingdom. Do you still love the Lord? You know, Jesus, the resurrected Christ, was talking about that church, that church in the book of Revelation. He said they have forgotten their first love. Have you forgotten your first love? Do you need to stir again the dying embers? You need to recreep again that which is of God. And then number four, you've got to live in step, even with the Spirit, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. Now, I, I want to close by sharing with you the intricacies of the leading of the compelling spirits. How does this spirit lead? And we're going to take that, we're going to just dovetail to that. And we're going to take our, uh, our discussion outline from Acts 20, 22, 24, which was one of the scriptures we read. And, and that's about Paul. I want to show you something from the life of that great man. And it will help you see that the spiritual work is a work that will cost you. The spiritual work is a work that will lead you to the place called there in the mind of God. If you are going to live by the Spirit, you are going to walk in the Spirit. Hello. You've got to walk in the Spirit. You've got to live by the Spirit. And one of the things we must learn is the compelling power of the Spirit. Now, and I say that this is also how the Lord leads us and directs us into purpose, into destiny, and into all that God has in mind for us. And the first thing I want to show you from the life of, 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 of Paul, uh, from the street eyes, is that not everywhere you are meant to go will be easy. Hello? Not everywhere you are meant to go will be easy. God is not calling us to live as lipitudes. God is calling us to live as giants. God is not leaving us to live as cats. He's calling us to live as lions. Listen, dear friends, there is no deception in scriptures. Uh, you understand that? Anybody who teaches you that is, is lying to you. In the will of God, in the mind of God, is a people who are built even though there is the fortress of his name, but you are also built in such a way that you can go through anything. In verse 22, Paul says something that is very prior He says, see now, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem. He said, I go bound by the spirit to Jerusalem. He said, see, I go now compelled by the spirit to Jerusalem. I'm not sure you understand what that means because you don't understand what Jerusalem means in the scheme of things. Jerusalem is where Jesus died. Is where a lot of prophets before Jesus died. Jerusalem is that place that according to the testimony of the Christ in Luke chapter 13 verse 34, listen to this. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophet and stone those sent to you. They don't only kill prophet. They kill anyone who calls himself an oracle of God. Kill anyone who says they are sent of God. He said, how often have I gathered your children together as the hen gathers a cheek under her wings and you are not willing this is one of the descriptions Jesus gave of Jerusalem. You who kill the prophet. You who stone those who are sent to you. Now to make things worse or more challenging, every city that Paul went, there was already a prophecy. A prevailing prophecy. Uh, and that was that prophecy. He said that chains are waiting. Chains are waiting. Now Acts chapter 21 verse 4. The Bible says, And having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days. And through the Spirit, they were telling Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. Listen, apart from the generic prophecy of his life, that every city he goes, there were chains, there were also men sent of God. Who told, who told Paul and said, listen, listen, they, they, t go, don't go to Jerusalem. There, there is danger in that city. But he kept going. The Bible says on the next day, Acts 21, 8 to 12, that's the chapter after the one we are reading. Scripture says, on the next day, we departed and came to Caesarea. And we entered in the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming to us, he took Paul's bed and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owned this bed. And deliver him to the hands of the Gentiles. When we add this, we and the people have urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. So Jerusalem, that is where Paul is heading. Why is he heading to Jerusalem? 
despite all the prophetic warnings, is he just a stubborn guy? Is he someone who is just looking for being able to die? Is he someone who just wants to boast that he's a martyr? No, he was compelled by the Spirit. Compelled. This is why he was going. He was compelled. Paul reminds us that not everywhere we are meant to go will be easy and comfortable. That's what the life of Paul taught us. And this is important for us to know. Because some of us, have, uh, we just quit when the going gets tough. We, we quit. We, don't, we are not resolute. We think that the will of God is, is a promise of, 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 of pleasure. The will of God is a, is a promise of His, is a promise of, of His. No, in the will of God, there might be His, but at certain times, doing the will of God is not comfortable. Doing the will of God is not easy. Sometimes we quit when the toy it gets tough. I've seen people who left ministry. I've seen people who left their God-given call. I've seen people who aborted their God-given destiny. Why? Because they met with hardship. I've seen people who left their marriage. I've seen people who left their God-ordained relationships. I've seen people quit their job. They leave their responsibility. They quit praying. They quit the church. Some people even quit on God. Why? Because the going gets tough. They get offended, they quit. They get offended, they stop. But that's not what Paul's life taught us. Paul's life taught us it may be tough, but you are compelled to do it. You are compelled to do it. I'm not saying there is not a season to leave. At certain times, God will move upon you and say you should leave a place. Sometimes God will say leave a city. Sometimes we say God will say leave a job. But listen to this, Paul did not leave because it was tough. Many of us leave and quit because it is tough. Or because our ego has been, has been, has been dented. Oh, you won't do the will of God while ego is still your God. You won't do the will of God while you are still egocentric. Instead of being spirit-centric, you won't do the will of God. In the will of God is complete surrender. In the will of God is humility. The Holy Spirit leads better humble spirits, humble people. Listen, dear friends, if you want to live in the fullness of God's plan for your life, you've got to live a life of humility. Understand, understand today. Keep it as, as a gem in your hand. The will of God will lead you to places that are uncomfortable. Winners are not people who never fail, but people who never quit. Be resilient. Be resilient. Don't quit because it's hard. Don't quit on people. We live in a generation where fathers quit on their children. Fathers quit on their, on their wives. They leave. They just run away. They just run away for nothing. And when things life become easier, they want to come back. They want to come back and do something and in the life of those children. When you are absent, when they were growing, when you are absent, when things were tough, you've got to be there. You've got to be resilient. We don't quit. We are children of God. We stay. You must learn to stay in the race. It might not be comfortable, but stay in the race. Because in the will of God, in the final analysis, in the will of God is fulfillment. Number two, the compelling spirit, how does he lead us? The intricacies of his leading is that the compelling spirit, is, and that's why he doesn't come with talking. Sometimes he doesn't come with speaking. You just know you are compelled to go. You are compelled to go. Somebody say, why? So I'm compelled to take that word of God. I'm compelled to be a missionary. I'm compelled to take the word of God to Niger State. I'm compelled. I'm, I'm not called to the city. I'm compelled. People don't understand that, but you do. You do, because you are compelled. Listen to this number two. When God calls you to go forward, He may require you to leave something behind. When God compels you to move forward, you may have to leave something behind. And that chapter 20 is such an interesting chapter to read. It starts with Paul teaching midnight to the point that a guy named Eutychus fell asleep during Paul's teaching. Uh, and somehow, somehow he fell <laughs> and broke his leg, eh, died. I mean, and then Paul came, rose, uh, and then raised him up from the dead. <laughs> and Paul continued teaching uh, after he raised the guy up. I mean, 
He continues with a few warnings, spoke to the elders at Ephesus, tells them that he's leaving and going to Jerusalem. And Paul is leaving them in a good season. They love Paul and Paul loves them. But he had to leave them to go to Jerusalem. He left them because he was compelled by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. This was a good time in Paul's ministry. And I wonder how many of us have not advanced in our God-given destiny because we have prioritized comfort over calling. We have prioritized comfort over calling. You feel the Spirit leading you, compelling you to do something, to make a change, to give. But you begin to evaluate and to reason. And it's becoming, you are telling yourself, I'm comfortable here. It's risky to go on. Therefore, you are not moving forward. And you are enjoying your present level of success. Even though there is the compelling power of spirit upon you that is saying, break forth tomorrow. Break forth tomorrow. But you are injuring the spirit because there is something precious in your sight that you don't want to let go of. I've seen people, even though there is the compelling power of the spirit, they can't let go of their present relationship. Even though there is the testimony of the spirit, but they are afraid that if I let this go, will somebody better come? They are compelled. But they don't want to let go of what they are holding in their hands. And they are saying, spirit to receive. I tell them, I say, how can you close your hands and be able to receive something? By holding on to something, you are stopping yourself from receiving that which the spirit wants to give. Listen, at some times, we just have to let go. Let go of your past. Let go of that guy so that the new can come. You are not moving forward because you are stuck in yesterday. Listen, dear friend, God wants to take us further. But there are things that are anchoring us down to the same spot. And now, I can't go to Jerusalem because I'm busy here. I'm stuck here. I'm anchored down here. Uh, you know you feel the Spirit compelling you. You have been praying for a while. And the same testimony of the Spirit is that the compelling power says it is time to advance. Or you find it difficult to leave because of the preciousness of the present. I wonder if some of us have stopped moving forward in our race with God. In our God-giving journey, we are anchored down with other things. When God says it is time to let loose, let the ship go. Let the ship sail. Let the ship of your life move forward because I've got better plans for you. Oh, I know what it means to leave comfort. I know what it means to live your presentness. I know what it live to live that which is precious and to go for something more. I remember in the city of Bologna, I had to leave a church I started myself. I had to leave a people I loved, a people I watched grow in the things of the Spirit, a people that were developing to the nature of the Christ. I had to leave all of that, all of the work, because there was the compelling power of the Spirit that it's time to go. It's time to yield. It's time to move to something deeper. It's time to go to something more. The presentness may be uncomfortable. It may look like the past was more comfortable than now, but we do not judge the things of the Spirit based on the data of the flesh. We judge based on the data of the Spirit. The Spirit says go. The compelling Spirit says go. I was almost depressed in that city. Depressed, and the things that were going around me were not. There were details of things that were great, uh, of revival, of things moving on. And on the inside, I was almost depressed. Why? Because I was no longer in tandem with the longings of the spirit. There was yet the compelling power of the spirit, and I was in an utmost struggle with him uh, until I said, "No more, no more." We've got to enter into the fullness of God's plan for your life. Uh, some people are listening to me and they are anchored down on their finances, anchored down on their jobs, anchored down on their relationships, anchored down on habits, anchored down on attitudes, anchored down on pride, anchored down on ego, anchored down on things that are stopping them from going into the fullness of God's will, God's mind for their life, anchored down on fear, anchored down on that, on doubt. I've come to announce to somebody, it is time to flee that yoke of yourself and press in into the things that are before you. Paul said, I do not look at the things which are behind. He said, I press on to the things which are ahead. I forget the things which are past. It's time to forget the things which are past. By that, Paul was saying, you've got to let go of your past sources. Let go of your past failures and move in. Keep pressing on because in God, there is always more. In God, there is always more. 
It's more or less more. I agree with Elizabeth Elliot, who said, if we really have too much to do, there are some items on our agenda which God did not put there. Somebody said, I'm too busy to do the will of God. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Elliot said, if you have got too much to do, there are some things on the agenda that God did not put there. Let us submit the list to him. Let us submit your to-do list to God. Let's let him see it. Let him check it. Let him indicate which items you have to delete. If you would delete those items, there will always be time to do the will of God. 24 hours is enough to do the will of God. If you don't find a place for self-development, you do not find a time for the things of the Spirit, it is because you are bored down by, with things that God did not put on that agenda. It's time to give that attempt to God. If you are too busy for him, it's not because God made us too busy. Because we decided to be busy. Paul was committed to Jesus that even his own life took the back seat. He was available to serve the Christ. He put the Christ first. It was not easy, but he did it. I've come to announce to somebody it's time to be focused, to be determined, and to finish well. And that's the third one. That's the final thing. I found out that in the leading and the compelling power of the Spirit is the grace to finish well. Many people don't finish well because, not because they did not hear God, not because they cannot be instructed, but they did not listen to the compelling Spirit. When the compelling Spirit told them, leave that finance, stop dealing with finances. When he told them, that relationship cut it off. This girl wants something more. Oh, when the Spirit still told them, that man don't settle for him. If you settle for him, your ministry will be taken away. They did not listen to the compelling power of the Spirit. Listen to this. The compelling force of the Spirit is enough. Somebody say, I, I need him to say a rema word. No, in trusting him, in being resolute, you must understand. When he compels you, it's enough to move you. If you are going to finish well, you've got to listen to the compelling part of the Spirit. One of the ways, dimensions that the Spirit will lead you. If you are a minister, if you are an entrepreneur, sometimes the compelling Spirit will save you from investing wrongly. The reason you lose money is because you did not listen. There was the pressure of the Spirit in your spirit, man. There was a pressure. You just felt uncomfortable. I've seen times that it seems like even my eye, my pressure, blood pressure increases. Why? Because the Spirit is compelling me. He's telling me, no, 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 no. You aren't going to do that. He's not saying anything. But there is a comfort. There is a discomfort. How? Somebody say, how is that so? It's so and it's simple. Because he who is joined with the Lord is the same spirit with him. Because your spirit is now one with the spirit of God. When the spirit of God weighs in on you, it weighs in on your spirit. Therefore, Paul was saying, I was compelled I was bound by the Spirit. And I told us that that Spirit he was talking about was not the Holy Ghost. He was talking about his own Spirit. It was the pressure laid by the Holy Spirit upon his Spirit man that made him be under pressure. The pressure of the Spirit. Are you one with the Spirit? This is the only guarantee. Somebody say, I read the Word. Oh God, you will read the Word and you will still fall into sin. If you do not listen to the Holy Ghost, because it's the Spirit that battered the Word, it's the one who will tell you, these people want to get you. Leave that church right now. It's the one who will tell you, that prophet is a fake prophet. It's the one who will tell you, that teacher is into adultery. It's the one who will tell you, even though you have no evidence, that will tell you that that pastor is a 419. It's the one who will tell you, you don't have proof. He won't say he's a forward and he won't tell you things. But he will put so much pressure in you, on you, that you will know the things to do is to leave. It's to go. Paul say, I'm bound by the Spirit. Somebody say, I'm bound by the Spirit. Somebody say, I'm bound by the Spirit. I'm bound by the Spirit to the will of God. Somebody say, I'm bound by the Spirit to the will of God. That's one of the prayers you must learn to pray. Lord, I am bound to your will. By the Spirit, I am compelled to your will. By, by your Spirit, I am bound to your will. Paul said in Acts 20, 22, he said, and see, now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. He probably had a lot of questions. Somebody say, I, I, I want to do ministry, but I have questions. <laughs> I, I, I want to do this, but I have questions. Listen, dear friends, you must learn to just follow him. 
follow him. Just trust him. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. See, it's much easier to go and finish well when you allow yourself to be bound by the Holy Spirit. When his pleasure becomes your pleasure. When his word becomes your light. When his displeasure becomes your displeasure. When his hunger becomes your hunger. When his Life and his valve become your valve. When his zest becomes your zest. When his zeal becomes your zeal. When you are consumed by him. It's easy. It's easy. The word for bound, like I said in the original language, is the word dew. It means to tie. It means to bind. Listen, when they say someone is demonic, it means he is bound to demons. The word used is the word dews. The word dews. I, I hope you understand it now. Is the word deals. That means that the demons are the ones controlling that person. That's what it means to be demonic. Listen to this. To be led of the spirit means to be spirinic. If there's a word like that. It means to be bound to the will of the spirit. It means to be bound to the influences of the spirit. It means to be bound to the voice of the spirit. It means to be bound to the yieldings, the promptings, uh, the voicing, the speakings of the Spirit, the groanings of the Spirit. To be bound. A demonic person who is sexually, who has been afflicted, joined to, a, to, 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 to sex, a, 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 a demon of sex, is addicted. When the thing calls, when the pressure comes, he can't control. She can't control herself. He can't control herself, himself. He just looks for somebody to sleep with. Whether he pays an analogy, it doesn't matter. You just have to do it. You just have to yield. The pressure has come. No voice came. The pressure just came. The pressure just came. I need to do something now. I need to have sex now. I need to have sex now. I need to have sex now. What's going on? The pressure has come. The demonic pressure has come. Listen to this. As I am the spirit also put pressure on us. That's what it means to be a spirit-filled, led believer. It, that's what it means to be walking in step. With the Spirit, according to 5.25 of Galatians, 5.16 of Galatians, it means the Spirit comes as an overbearing force upon your life. It takes you over. I'm praying because the Spirit is putting me under pressure. I'm reading the scriptures because the Spirit is putting me under pressure. I cut off from that relationship because the Spirit put me under pressure. I leave that church because the Spirit put me under pressure. I, I move, I migrate, I return, I jack and jack that because the Spirit put me under pressure. It is the power of the Spirit, the compelling force of the Spirit. It's much easier to finish well. It's much easier. If you have learned to be moved and compelled by the Spirit, you will discover that temptation, you will not fall to temptation. You will see all the way of escape. The only guarantee of seeing the way of escape and following the way of escape is being compelled by the Spirit. When temptation comes, you are not hearing God again. Hey, ah, Olua, what are you saying? No. It's the force of the Spirit that carries you from that place. I take you away. That's it. Somebody needs to be liberated. Somebody needs to know that the Holy Ghost is a person. You need to understand the operations of the Spirit. And my prayer to you today is that there, you will be, there will be men and women, young adults, students, children, single, married, who will give permission to the Holy Spirit to bind them. Who will give permission to him to say, bind me, Holy Spirit. Who, who will say, this board prayer to God. God, do whatever you will with my life. Lead me wherever you want me to go. Take me to places you alone will have me go to. Take over my life. Take over my life. Take over my life. I wouldn't go where you wouldn't want me to go. I would be where you would want me to be. I just want to be where you are. I just want to be where you are. I just want to be where you are. Send me wherever you want to send me. Use me however you want to use me. But please, don't allow me to be anchored down on yesterday. Don't allow me to be anchored down on that which is your will for my life. Oh, Lord, I will be available. I will be available. Don't let me be unavailable when you call me. No matter how tough, how challenging the moment may be. Oh, Lord, let my call, let my, let my response be yes. Let my response be yes. I love that song. I'll say yes. Oh, yes. To your will and to your ways, I'll say yes, oh yes. When the Spirit speaks to me, and my answer will be yes, 
Oh, yes. I say yes. Oh, yes. To your will and to your ways. I say yes. Oh, yes. When the Spirit speaks to me, and my answer will be yes. Oh, yes. I wish there's somebody who is saying yes to God tonight. I wish there's somebody who is saying, Lord, mind me tonight. If you are, just lift up your voice in prayer, sir, and just begin to say, Lord, I'll say yes, oh yes, sir, to your will and to your ways. I'll say yes to the pleasure of the Spirit. I'll say yes to the pleasure of the Spirit. I'll say yes to the will of the Spirit. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. I'll say yes, oh yes, to your will and to your ways, I'll say yes, oh yes, when your spirit speaks to me, and my answer will be yes, oh yes, send me wherever you want me to go, Lipo Shamine Abovia. Repole broca libra baba libra rosa tie. Are you praying tonight? Fear may want to disrupt God's plan, but say, Lord, take me to the field of faith. Take me to the arena of faith. Take me to the arena of faith. Lord, let your love constrain me. I'm willing. I'm willing tonight. I'm willing tonight. I'm willing tonight. I surrender all my intellect. Surrender my will, my pleasure, my desire. Put them all at your feet. Let your compelling spirit lead me. Somebody say, Lord, I'm bound to your spirit. I'm bound to your spirit. I'm bound to your spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. And amen. And amen. I want to encourage you to listen to that sermon again and again. I want to encourage you to pray those prayers. They're very spiritual prayers. It's not just singing songs that we let the Lord consume us. We need to understand how how that the Spirit compels us in situations. And I found that to be true as it concerns mandates, as it concerns God's vision, and it concerns purpose and destiny, and it concerns finishing well. I want to encourage you, let us be bound to the Spirit, be yoked to the Spirit. There's no yoke better. There's no yoke better. Be yoked to the Spirit. And the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Thank you for joining today. I know it's such a profitable hour even in the presence of God. I want to encourage you to be at our service this Sunday. Um, I'll be teaching again on, on the pressure of the Holy Spirit. Um, such a privilege, such an honor um, to, to, to have God declare to us. And it's such, such an awesome thing to know that it is the spirit life, the spirit life. Uh, and we are, so, we are so, we're just looking forward to what the Lord has in his scroll for us, even in this month. I want you so just walk in the spirit. I love the NLT. Say, walk in step with the spirit. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. If you are in the city of Lagos, join us now am at Transom House. Number 22, Isaac Aluko Loko Street, Nara Bethed Office, Igwe Fanleki. And I know we'll do you good. There's such an overwhelming power of the spirit right now, even upon me. But I'll see you again. I'll see you again and again. Have a great night rest. Cheers.